Evelyn Sharma, and you're listening to Love Matters. Today, our topic is living an authentic life, being LGBTQ plus in India, and living it to the fullest. This podcast is a collaboration with Indian Express and DW, Germany's international broadcaster. And it's all about relationship topics that matter to you and me. In every episode, we will hear from a listener with a challenge in matters of love. And we'll have interesting guests on who can talk to that issue. Of course, there's also going to be a quiz on today's topic later in the show. So stay tuned. India just recently, in 2018, decriminalized homosexuality. A step into the right direction, but still a long way to go to create acceptance in society. My gorgeous guest today is Sushant Divgikar, and he wears so many hats. He's a model, actor, singer, activist, and so much more. As Rani Kohenur, he is one of the most well-known drag performers in India and abroad. He also appeared on famed singing competition Sarigama Pa, and now mentors new drag artists. In 2014, Sushant was crowned Mr. Gay India and identifies as gender fluid. Pronouns she, he, they. Welcome to the show, Sushant. Woohoo! I am so happy to be here with you, Evelyn. And I have watched your films. I have always admired all the philanthropic activities that you indulge in and make the world a better place. I'm so happy it's that I joined you. It's my pleasure. It's wonderful to have you here. Sushant, in every episode, we feature a real listener's problem that I'll discuss with my guests. This time, we hear from a listener in New Delhi who wanted to actually remain anonymous. He has come out as gay to his parents who are accepting but worrying he won't be able to have a normal, quote, normal life in India. He still feels, you know, a bit of shame around his sexuality. And uh, I'll play you a clip right now from our conversation that we recorded with him before the show. Sure. So let's listen to his concern. Sure. Hi, I am 24 years old. I'm a cisgender homosexual man living in New Delhi. So one thing I have a real problem with is dealing with this idea of shame or disgust. Um, perhaps it's like ingrained in me the way uh, Indians are brought up or the way that families look at you, the fact that your voice is too feminine, the fact that you dress a certain way or the fact that you sit a certain way, the fact that you're seen with a man instead of a woman, perhaps. And it really sort of affects the way that I present myself to the world. And it's also really affect the way that my work also speaks to the world. But this, this sense of like, how will people see me or, or the fact that I'm shameful to be who I am um, doesn't really go away. Well, I'll give you a bit of context and background on our listener. So he says, of course, it was difficult for him to come out, uh, even to himself. He thought it was just maybe a phase. And he feels being LGBTQ is still viewed as unnatural in India. He feels a lot of self-hate and judgment. Sushant, tell us, have you ever felt like this? Uh, you know, a bit of shame or questions whether this is just a phase in your life? And, and what advice would you have for our listener to kind of overcome this? Sure, and absolutely. I'm a staunch believer in believing in myself. Hmm. And when I was growing up, you know, 15 years back when I went for my first audition hmm. uh, for a television commercial... Uh, they shunned me for my sexuality. They didn't even let me audition. Mm. So for me, I felt very attacked. Um, but I could do two things. I could have gone home and never gone back to an audition again. Right. Or I could have gone back to another one, which I did the next week. Mm. And gathered myself and the courage to go there and say that I exist. Mm. So I started respecting myself more. I started uh, becoming more confident. I started honing my skills and I, you know, I now command attention. 
uh, wherever I go because it's not just my sexuality I'm yeah. so much more than my sexuality I'm a son I'm a child I'm a brother I'm a sister I'm a I'm a sibling I'm also mm-hmm. an artist I'm a very good friend and I do so many things so mm-hmm. beautifully so and being uh, homosexual or transgender is one thing one yeah. aspect and to this listener you know I was his age and uh, definitely I had very supportive parents I have to give them a big uh, round mm-hmm. of applause for really uh, <laughs> keeping up with me and my brother you know mm-hmm. uh, we were quite a handful but um, yes and and I think that because my parents uh, celebrated us not as their gay child and straight child, just as their children. Absolutely. Regardless of orientation, color, weight, size, height, none of that. Because first we were their children and then everything else followed. So this is actually a message to all the parents out there. Mm-hmm. Is that you have a choice to be a good parent or not. Absolutely. I think what our listeners said was that his parents are actually very supportive and just accept him I mean for who he is yes. but uh, they're just so worried you know they're from a different generation and they're just so worried that he won't be able to succeed in life and of course all this kind of energy is coming to him as well uh, to to doubt and to worry yes. and you said that uh, you developed this confidence which I really admire you for your confidence And so you said you you had to work on this. And uh, what advice would you give to someone who who just wants to live a regular life being who they are? Right. Um, First of all, I would like to tell everyone that's listening that all of you, all of us have something in us that we need to kind of find. Now, Another person can't do that for you. You, It's it's very inward. That journey is very inward. Mm. So all the conflicts that you have with yourself, you are the only one to resolve them. Mm. And once you kind of see what you're good at doing and you keep at it, um, you know, for years and months and, you know, decades sometimes, and you will see the end of the tunnel and you will see that there is light at the end of the tunnel. But if you choose to let other people's opinions bother you what's going to happen is that you will not reach actualization um, as fast as you would have if you had concentrated on yourself Mm -hmm. so I mean one thing that I would just like to tell everyone that you know just focus on what you want to do and what you do well Mm -hmm. And don't focus on other people's opinions. They're not paying your bills. Right. I have another question for you. How old were you when you kind of realized, hey, I, I, I think it's time to tell my parents that I'm gay? I was 18. But, you know, Evelyn, I didn't tell them. I told my brother. And my brother couldn't keep it in his stomach. So he <laughs> went and bitched me out. And actually, I planned this whole uh, you know, this whole entire episode where in my head, you know, it was very dramatized in my head. The whole musical about your life. (laughs) Oh my God, all of that, like the Bollywood film. And then I was like, oh my God, my parents are so much above the, you know, the rigmarole of, oh my God, the mother's fainting. She drops her thali of puja and all that. Yeah. My father's disinheriting me. And then I, I, I looked at the worst case scenario But nothing of that sort happened to me. And uh, my father asked me, actually, because my brother went and told him, do you know? He didn't. He fell short of telling him I'm gay. Uh, But my brother went and told him, do you know that Sushant goes and attends gay events and parties? Ooh. Yeah. (laughs) Well, my my father, being the rock star he is, he just looked over his shoulder and he said, so what is it to you? You should mind your own business. Mm. And... uh, and my dad was in my corner immediately. And oh, that's lovely. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, he just asked me, Sushant, are you gay? And I said, yes, dad. Because I didn't want to lie to him. Um, I've never lied to my parents. And um, he said, okay, I might not understand it right now, but give me some time. But all you need to know is that you're not my... Oh, God, I get emotional. Aww. <laughs> Yeah, he all, all that he told me was, you're not my gay child or my straight child, you're my child. And it is my duty for bringing you into this world to take care of you. That is beautiful. And I thought that was the most precious thing I've heard in my life. Oh, of course. That's what every child really just wants to hear from their parents. Yes. That you're accepted the way you are. <laughs> Yeah, yes. and my mother is a diva. When I wanted to tell her, she just like, <laughs> if this is about you being gay, I already know. 
my god mothers bad. know everything and we always think they don't <laughs> yes, they know and, everything <laughs> and she said that to me evelyn she said that you that know i'm your so mother cute. you think i don't know i'm your mom exactly when you came out to them as like gender fluid the understood or they were a bit like okay now I need to research the next thing <laughs> you know my mom was fed up actually because <laughs> my mom was like this is your third time you're coming out now what is it <laughs> because first I came out as gay and then yeah. I came out with my drag queen persona so she was yeah. like oh god but I always knew you wanted to dress up you used to steal my lipsticks and my saris and uh, <laughs> Uh, and then she said that then i went and told them i'm gender fluid and then now they were like what does that mm. mean so i was like it falls under the transgender spectrum uh, okay. which basically means that i don't want to be identified as either just male or female i'm a trans person and mm -hmm. um, uh, and i enjoy celebrating the amalgamation of male and female energies within me and mm -hmm. uh, they said but well, now we really don't care because now you know we've seen everything so <laughs> <laughs> so they were like it really doesn't matter what do you want from us and i said nothing just love and just your hugs <laughs> Uh, pronouns important to you like uh, does it matter if somebody calls you she or he or they is it is it just doesn't matter or or do you prefer one for me uh, Evelyn honestly yeah. personally I don't have a problem because I'm gender fluid and the type of gender fluid that doesn't have a problem being called either that's the reason why my preferred pronouns publicly are he she and they yeah. and uh, therefore for me I really don't have an issue if uh, anybody addresses me as he she or they they just they just have to say it you know with with respect and uh, if I I understand that they're not they don't mean any harm then they can call me whatever they just need to make it yeah. sexy ah <laughs> there you go <laughs> so our listener he is out to his parents but He finds it still difficult to have a conversation about queer relationships because there's just a lack of representation. Let's listen to his um, second concern. Um, one thing that I have a hard time sort of talking to my parents about is, well, having a healthy relationship or just being in a healthy marriage, hopefully one day. Um, from their perspective, they seem to have this idea that they have never really seen successful queer people around them or even successful queer relationships around them at all. And I have a hard time just telling them, well, it's just like you have seen or it's, it's the same. Relationships are weird and people are weird, but families are still families. What advice would you have for um, our listener here, Sushant? Um, you know, have you ever had this kind of issue where you wouldn't know how to talk to people about something that was so new for them um, and how to kind of like, you know, bit by bit, piece by piece, kind of, you know, serve it to them so they would understand. Um, Evelyn, being very honest, yeah. um, I don't uh, really much care about what uh, anybody thinks of me or my journey. Hmm. But definitely my parents, uh, I, I hold very close to my heart. Um, but I know for a fact uh, that even if they would not have, in the worst case scenario, uh, accepted me or been, you know, might not have understood my choices or my uh, the way I want to live my life and how I want to express myself, mm. I would still do it because it's this one life that I've been given. And it's very unfair for other people to expect or to just completely dissociate from the fact that, okay, the child has these issues when it comes to relationships or just by them being a marginalized, discriminated community in larger society that the parents would just like to dissociate and say that, but this is, we don't understand this. We don't, you know, we, we want you to be safe, but we don't understand this. That's not a plausible response mm. to a child that wants you to understand only uh, because of the function that you're their parent, mm. uh, you know, and They don't want you to uh, give them a judgment or make them feel more uncomfortable and, and say that, oh, but we haven't seen a successful relationship when it comes to queer relationships. So, but yeah. there are so many relationships that are heterosexual that don't work. Absolutely. There are so many LGBT parents that uh, adopt children that heterosexual parents mm. have disowned. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, yeah. so we it's 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 the lens we we choose to use when we look at things, mm-hmm. and and losing your child to anything is devastating. Absolutely. So for me, I think that parents have to understand that the child will live their life. It you don't have to worry about who will be with them. Now, who has promised that if your child was heterosexual, that they will get married or they will have. Um, you know, a, a, a partner or a companion. Sushant, how do you feel about family? Do you want to get married? Do you want, is that on the cards or are you just happily single? I am married to my profession and mm-hmm. it might sound very cliche, but I love the coins. I love, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know what people are uh, fussing about. You know, my thing is that, um, for me personally, okay, mm-hmm. um, I really, really think that this is my age to work, make my parents proud. I mm-hmm. want to concentrate on the relationships I am in already. And those are of a son, of a child, mm-hmm. uh, of a brother, mm-hmm. of a godparent, of a, I have mm-hmm. a beautiful niece. I have my friendships. These are some mm-hmm. things that I want to concentrate on. So our listener also in the pre-interview um, said that he felt a lot of pressure to have to be the best in the room at everything because um, he was gay and different. And so he felt like this was a way to protect himself against criticism, to always be the best at everything. Yes. So, Shan, has, have you ever felt this way or do you have advice for our listener to relax, how to relax a bit? I just want to give this listener a big hug. Oh. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have been there. Like, literally, Evelyn, this is like you're reading out my fucking life story Aww. to me. You know? It is so, um, it, it's just bringing back such memories because I know what he's going through. Mm-hmm. And um, it is basically every queer kid in this country that has mm-hmm. to do what he, he is conflicting, you know, within him. And it is because we are already looked down upon because of our gender, orientation, expression that we have to hustle 10 times more than, say, a heterosexual teenager or young adult because of the fact that we are being judged only based on our gender. So even to put our foot in the door, we have to hustle 10 times harder. So I know what he's trying to say, but I would also, on the other hand, tell him to take it easy. And uh, because what happens is very often we completely neglect the fact that we're burning out. And yeah. just so that, you know, we're pleasing some someone else. But I'm very appreciative of the fact that he has shared this with us because it's very difficult um, to share something this personal I know. Um, on, yeah. on a public domain. So I really want to just give him a big hug and say that do the best you can. Yeah. And do the best and leave the rest. That's fantastic. Did you hear oh. that is the sound for our quiz? Whoa. <laughs> our producers, huh? um, every episode prepare a little surprise quiz for us with questions to test our oh. knowledge on the episode's topic, which um, oh. of course I think you will know a lot more than me. But um <laughs> My producer is going to send me a text message with the questions and then there's usually like a multiple choice and uh, you and I can together guess the answers and of course our listeners can guess along, Um, maybe they know more than us and when we guess the answer right, we will hear this sound and if it's wrong, then we will hear this sound. Do, do, do. <laughs> so let's see what today's quiz is all about. I'm very scared, but okay. Okay, here it is. It's a multiple choice movie quiz. What? Okay. Shit. Evelyn, you take it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. LGBTQ representation still lacks in Indian cinema, but it's getting better. Here are the plots of three LGBTQ plus movies and we'll have to guess the right answer. Let's hear question number one. A dysfunctional family are at each other's throats. Two of the brothers don't get along and argue constantly. Things get worse when, when the family matriarch discovers intimate photos of her son and his boyfriend. Kapoor and sons. Yeah, uh, Kapoor and sons. I think so too. Yeah, 100%. Yay! Here we go. Yes! yes! Yes, and we didn't even need the multiple choice. The multiple choice was Kapoor and Sons 
Bombay talkies or love Ajkal, but we knew already. Yes, honey. When you said dysfunctional <laughs> family, I was like, girl. One second, that's every Bollywood movie. Ah! <laughs> that is every single one. The second movie is about two women living in New Delhi in unhappy marriages. Shunned by their husbands, they find each other and start an intimate relationship. Hmm. Here are the three possible answers. A, queen. B, fire. C, made in heaven. Mm, oh, this is a tough one. Hmm. But I guess I'll go with fire. Yeah, it's the only one I don't know. So I would go with fire as well. Because I, I don't think queen had any of that. Uh, no, Made in Heaven, no. I haven't watched either. Made in, Heaven, uh, Made in Heaven also has, um, you know, the, the main character as a gay character. Um, mm -hmm. Played very beautifully. Uh, but uh, was also was uh, the first Indian series to be nominated for the Emmy Awards. But oh. it uh, definitely doesn't have, uh, in my opinion, doesn't have a, a lesbian relationship. So I think it's mm. fire because I remember very clearly it was Shabana Azmi and uh, Nandita Das. Oh, okay. Well, let's go for fire. Yay! Yay! You got it. <laughs> I'm surprisingly very good at this game. You are. <laughs> you are. Okay, I, is there one more? Let's hear the third movie. A son awaits the return of his father, who left the family seven years previously. His father comes back as trans woman Shilpa. Will the family accept Shilpa? Oh, I know this one. Which one is that? Wait, let's hear the uh, possible answers. Give me the option. Give me the option. <laughs> the three options are Ek Lurki Ko Dekha To Aisa Laga B. Gulabi Aina The Pink Mirror or C. Super Deluxe Super Deluxe Ah! I haven't watched that. Super that Deluxe. sounds you so have good. To watch it. Evelyn, <laughs> you have to watch Super Deluxe on Netflix. It is an amazing film. It's so beautiful. This sounds really good. This sounds yeah. like a good movie. Well, let's see. We say Super Deluxe. Yay! Yeah. Oh, I think you're really good at this. <laughs> oh my god. Our producers say we're total movie queens. Yes, honey. <laughs> yes, I think we are. Well, you are. I'm I'm just tagging along. <laughs> yeah, so it seems like the movie industry is showing LGBTQ plus stories and is also highlighting the discrimination faced by those in the community. Trans people in particular face a lot of problems. And, you know, things have gotten a bit better for the community. The Indian government overturned laws banning same-sex relations in 2018. But there's still a long way to go when it comes to general acceptance in society. Actually, our listener is yearning for a rom-com style meet-cute, but he's concerned about approaching guys and what their reaction might be. Let's listen to his next soundbite. Perhaps it's the fact that I've watched too many rom-coms while growing up, or have, perhaps it's the fact that um, this, this idea of shame sort of plays into it. But this organic dating, like going up to a person, saying hi, and then going for coffee, that's never really happened to me when I've gone up, gone up to a guy and just asked them, well, will you have coffee with me? It's always been through other dating apps. This organic dating is something that I really aspire to, but but this just doesn't happen. I don't know how to make it happen. I think our listener is very scared of homophobia to just walk up to somebody and say, hey, you want to go for a coffee with me? And then that person is like, no, I'm not gay. So uh, I think that's his biggest fear to be rejected and uh, probably shamed again. Um, so what, what would be your advice? Like, how, how, how do you find a, a date? I don't find a date. They find me. Absolutely. But, but I mean, regular way. people. <laughs> but, you know, usually my thing is that, um, I, I completely understand for people that are, uh, you know, new to this and have recently come out and, mm -hmm. uh, for them, they want to meet like-minded people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would just like to tell this person, this boy, never be uh, afraid of exploring. Definitely, you know, it, the best thing to do is that, you know, you can kind of read somebody's vibe 
and if that person is vibing with you and then you could probably just ask them straight up um yeah my thing is that you know whenever i know i, I meet somebody for the first time face to face my first mm. question is what are your pronouns you know uh, <laughs> yeah that's a good one i mean i don't want to i don't want to offend anybody and then yeah. uh, if they continue the conversation with me then i kind of get into the conversation as to okay what do you do and you know where mm. are you from and i think there's a uh, there's a chronology uh, and you can choose that narrative as well so really it depends on person yeah. to person i don't usually go out there looking for dates it's just I'm probably i'm just lazy also but um, somehow my dates have always found me ah i think yeah for me too <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> as as fabulous people, <laughs> what to do? <laughs> what to do? Uh, I think that also comes with um, you know the confidence that you were speaking about in the very beginning. You know, when you show this confidence to the world, then things will find you. People will find you that vibe with that. And uh, I think my advice probably to our listener would be to first find himself because I feel like there's still a lot of work to be done for him to accept himself the way he is and then uh, find some like-minded people to support you and kind of, you know, build a friend circle around yourself. There are a lot of apps as well, you know, Evelyn, that are not judgmental. They are actually very inclusive to um, homosexual dating or LGBT dating as well. So um, mm. if that works for him, then great, go ahead. Or if you organically mm -hmm. find somebody that interests you at, uh, as you mentioned, uh, you know, at uh, mm -hmm. LGBT events or parties, then why not? You know, because you know where they're coming from. You know, you can have a conversation with them without being, uh, without feeling attacked. So I think that that's great. You yeah. Know. What a lovely conversation, Sushant. What would you say to our listeners, you know, just to kind of like round it up? What was your, what has been your biggest takeaway from your journey so far? And what is that, that love and advice that you would like to give everyone in a few lines, maybe? I would just honestly like to tell um, from all, with all my heart, I would just like to tell all the listeners that, Please believe in yourself and never believe that you're alone because there are people out there that, um, and as I say, you know, your vibe attracts your tribe. Mm. Um, there will be people that will be on your in your corner, on your side. And don't ever think that you're alone in this or alone in your struggle. There's always people out there to help you. So please reach out and um, always believe in yourself because a lot of people will say a lot of things about you and your journey and question your integrity and dignity and all of those things. But when you're comfortable and confident within yourself, nothing else matters. And we need to understand that um, we're human at the end of the day. We might err and we might make mistakes, but that's not the end of the road. And, you know, you learn from your mistakes, grow and fly. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> and on that note, Evelyn, I have to sing you a song. Oh, please. Yes, please do. From one of your movies. <laughs> Which one? Uh, from Ye Javani Hai Diwani, darling. And uh, I want to sing this to you because you look stunning in that. Oh, Ooh, I wanted all those clothes, that wardrobe, that entire styling with, right from your, uh, you know, the... the <laughs> I was freezing my butt off in the Himalayas wearing tiny pink shorts. And I but loved it was, them. It and I was like, I, I felt very bad for you because I was like, my God, this girl must be dying. <laughs> so um, this is one of my favorite songs and it is called Balam Pichkari. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Itna maza kyu araha hai Tune hawa mein bhang milaya Dugna nasha kyu cha raha hai Aakhon se meetha tune khilaya Teri mal mal ki kurti gula bhi ho gai Tu chali chal aisa nava bhi ho gai To mal hum pichkari Wow, I love it. I love it. This is so wonderful. And your voice is just beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Sashant. And thank you so much for being here today. And talking with us on living an authentic life, being LGBTQ plus in India. 
And yeah, for being real with us and, you know, for such loving feelings for our listener who's going through, you know, his own struggles. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. And thank you so much to our listener for sending him his questions and for speaking with us so openly. Well, if you guys have a question in matters of love, make sure to write us to lovematters at dw.com and maybe your question will be featured next. We would love to hear from you. And make sure to tune in next week. I'll be speaking to comedian Kanis Surka about her divorce, her career, and so much more. Kanis also has some encouraging words for our listener who is dealing with the aftermath of her own divorce. I'm Evelyn Sharma, and I believe love matters. Love matters. Love matters. Love.